uh, has a, a main server. This is the main server. And uh, this main server is connected to a main switch. And uh, this switch is connected to gateway and then the gateway to the internet. And there is a peculiar thing about uh, Debian EDU that the main server always has this uh, IP 10.0.2.2. Uh, so if uh, when you install uh, the main server from the CD, uh, it will automatically set this uh, IP. And also it expects the IP of the gateway to be 10.0.0.1. So the gateway should have uh, this IP. And uh, uh, also uh, it expects that uh, this main server is the only D DHCP server in the, in the network. So uh, this main server provides DHCP and it expects that no other uh, DHCP uh, server is in the network. And so this gateway uh, just does the forwarding of, of the network, but it does not provide uh, DHCP for, for the clients in the, in the network. And uh, uh, when we try to virtualize the, this setup, first of all, uh, I have created this uh, gateway uh, just to forward the, the network. Uh, and uh, I make sure that it does not provide DHCP and it has this IP and then uh, I create uh, these networks uh, I, I call them switch zero this is switch zero and I call this uh, this network switch one uh, and I have just uh, uh, simulated uh, this far not uh, you can you can have other LTS, uh, LTSP uh, servers and uh, in the network of an LTSP server, you can have uh, disk list uh, machines, LTSP clients, disk list uh, workstations, or thin clients. We will see them uh, when we make a test. And also on the main on the main network, you can have uh, disk list uh, workstations, thin clients, but also uh, workstations. And uh, I I will start by creating uh, these uh, virtual networks, and then I will create this uh, virtual gateway, and then I will create the virtual machine for for the main server, and then install Debian Edu in it, and then uh, I I will try to start uh, uh, an LTSP client. Uh, let, let me clean this drawings. As you said, Debianedu expects a gateway with the 10 series IP. So uh, can I like have a different IP on the gateway as well as uh, interface Debianedu with external DHCP sources? Uh, uh, no, you, uh, it expects this gateway. So uh, when uh, you install the, the main server, uh, it accepts it set this IP to the main server and uh, uh, it set the gateway to, to this one. And uh, I think probably you can change it later. Maybe you can change it later, but uh, initially it, it expects a gateway like this, uh, this IP. Uh, I ask this because uh, since most of them will be integrating Debianedu with their <clears throat> existing network infrastructure and it may probably have a DNS as well as a DHCP server already within the networks. Uh, yes. Uh, what what would you say, Suman? Can you repeat it? Okay. Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, like uh, I may be having existing infrastructure already in place, and I want to just integrate the Binedu within our system. So my doubt was like, can I use the existing DHCP server that's already in the network with they've been able to uh, somehow like tweaking it yeah, the, so. yeah the, the problem is that you you cannot use it because uh, the main server has its own dhcp and two dhcp servers in the same network clash with each other uh, you can get unexpected uh, results 
So when a client uh, asks for an IP, uh, you, you don't know which IP uh, get from one server or from the other. So uh, it is recommended in the docs uh, that uh, you create a you create a gateway first that connects to the uh, to the network with DHCP. Here is your network with DHCP, and then put everything be behind the the gateway. Okay. Okay. Explain? Then I guess so, it's best to have a separate VLAN for Debianedo. Yes. Yes. Uh, this is one. Uh, of the difficult uh, uh, set of points of uh, of Debian EDU, in in my opinion, uh, this requirement that uh, uh, you have a fixed uh, gateway with uh, a fixed IP and no no DHCP, so th this makes it a little bit difficult to to install. Uh, anyway, uh, now let let me show how I con uh, I connect to the to the server. So uh, I connect to uh, to Guacamole, uh, and I use a username and password. Connect to this LexD1 RDP, and then I use a username and password here. Then open a terminal. And this, uh, using extra, uh, I connect to the server. Uh, on the server, uh, I start extra with. Uh, so uh, here, are, here I am on the on the server. Uh, host name server one, and the uh, username user one. I start the ex extra uh, uh, server. Uh, I've. I've installed the extra package, uh, and this is a very, very simple script. So uh, I kill existing uh, servers, and then extra start. This is the uh, display, and then also some some options. There can be some options, and uh, on the client, I use this uh, script extra attach. Uh, and the main command is this one here, extra attach. And this gives me this uh, terminal on the on the server, user one, uh, server one. Uh, now uh, the the benefit of uh, connecting with extra in, in this way is that uh, if I start a, a, a GUI program uh, in this uh, in this terminal, then the output will be displayed in the local machine. No, uh, so it run on the server, but uh, the Google interface will be displayed in uh, in the local machine. It is like X forwarding. Only that uh, with extra it is done more efficiently. So extra does X forwarding uh, in an efficient way. Maybe it compresses the connection, or I don't know. For example, let let me show you. Uh, so we we have this uh, this main server uh, which is uh, running. Uh, I will try to I will try to connect to uh, the graphical uh, console of of this uh, uh, virtual machine. LXC console. Type VGA. And I get. Uh, I, I get the graphical console of the virtual machine and I, I can actually log in here. So let me let me close it. Uh, I will actually make make this full screen. 
so that I can uh, work better. So uh, here I can uh, write LXC uh, commands. F first of all, uh, here we, uh, in, in this blog that I've written, I show how to install LXD, but LXD is already installed and it is, it is, it is very easy. Uh, we install first uh, snapd and then uh, with snap we install LXD and I'm installing the, the latest uh, channel. Uh, and it is very sim uh, similar. This is in Ubuntu, but uh, for Debian, we should uh, add this, these two uh, commands as well. And then uh, the, the first step is to install the gateway uh, because it needs a special uh, gateway with a special IP and with no DHCP. And uh, I will uh, I can create the, the network, the virtual network uh, switch zero. I call the network uh, with the name of, of the switch uh, with, with the command LXC network. So LXC network uh, list shows us a list of existing uh, networks. Uh, these are actually other networks that are created by other uh, software or other tools, but uh, uh, this one, this one and this one are uh, created and managed by LXC. Uh, uh, it is shown in this column, managed, yes. So uh, these three networks are uh, created and managed by uh, by this uh, tool, LXC and LXD. And this is the, the default uh, bridge, but uh, it offers uh, DHCP and it has an IP different from the one that I need. Uh, that's why I, I have to create uh, uh, an another uh, gateway, uh, another machine that can be used as the gateway. And uh, since I've already created this uh, switch zero and uh, switch one, let, let's create another one, for example, switch two. So, LXC network create switch uh, zero type bridge. Let me copy it. I, I will call it uh, switch two. So ne network create the name of the network and also I'm adding this uh, option type bridge. I'm a bridge network. We see uh, that switch two is has been created as well. Uh, however, it is serving as a, uh, a DHCP source as well, uh, and because we see that it has an IP, and if if we create a virtual machine that is connected to this network, it will auto uh, automatically get uh, an IP from this DHCP. We, we don't want uh, this. We, we want a dumb, uh, dumb uh, network, a stupid network that does not provide DHCP. Uh, and to correct this, uh, let, let's see also the configuration of this. This show, uh, shows the configuration of, the, on, of this network and uh, uh, it, it is uh, uh, in this network, and uh, this not uh, not true means that it, it provides not. And we want to remove these settings, and we remove them with this command unset. So uh, I am unsetting, or I am deleting this uh, this configuration setting, and this means that uh, it does not have an IP and it will not provide a DHCP to the 
virtual machines that are connected to, to it, to, to this network. And uh, I will remove this one as well. Let us uh, see the configuration again. Uh, no, the other one. So now we have removed these two configurations. And now we uh, are going to create uh, a virtual machine for the gateway. Uh, and I'm going to create it with this command. But uh, I, I already have a gateway machine, so I'm going to use a different network, a different name for it. I'm calling it, for example, gateway one. So uh, init initializes a uh, a container or a virtual machine. This option uh, minus minus VM shows that uh, this is going to be a virtual machine, not not a container, because uh, LXC can handle both containers and uh, virtual machines. And uh, this image uh, shows it what image to use as a ba base image. So LXC uh, works similar to Docker. It starts from a uh, from an image, and then uh, Builds the virtual machine uh, uh, using this image as a uh, as a hard disk. Uh, so I I don't have to install Debian to start a virtual machine and install Debian on it because it already has a Debian ver version in installed uh, in the default hard disk. And I'm installing uh, Debian 11. I'm using the Debian 11 image. I have this mach machine here, uh, this virtual machine, uh, gateway one. And uh, I'm going to, to attach, uh, by default, uh, uh, since I did not specify a uh, uh, network, it is connected to, to, uh, to bridge zero. So, uh, since I did not specify any network, it is connected uh, to the default network, which is this one, LXD uh, bridge, bridge Z zero. Uh, and this also allows it to connect to the internet. But now I'm going to connect it to this network as well, or to this uh, switch. And uh, I can do it with this uh, command, LXC network attach switch uh, to uh, gateway one. So I'm going to attach switch two to the virtual machine uh, gateway one. And now it will, it, uh, will be connected to two uh, networks, both to uh, this one for connecting to the network and to this one, which is an internal uh, uh, network. Or uh, this, is, this is the LAN and this is the one. Now, this is stopped, so let, let's uh, start the, this virtual machine. Uh, it is running, but it is not up yet because uh, it does not have an, uh, an IP. It should get an IP from the from the main uh, network that is connected to the internet. So let, let's wait a bit until. Okay. So now it has an uh, it has an IP, and 
uh, to go inside this uh, machine or to get a shell inside this virtual machine. Uh, I can use this command exec LXC exec. Uh, I will execute a command inside the virtual machine. Uh, gateway one is the virtual machine that uh, I will execute the command, and the command that will be executed is bash. So uh, I basically get a shell inside this virtual machine. Let me check the network. So uh, it has an IP which gets automatically from uh, from the uh, bridge that is connected to the internet, and it, it has also another uh, interface that does not have uh, a configuration yet. Because it is connected to two networks, this goes to the internet or WAN, and this goes to the inter internal network or LAN. And I'm going to uh, to modify the network configuration of this uh, gateway machine so that it can actually work as a gateway. It can forward the network connections to the to the internet. First of all, let let me check that the network connection works. So it is working. DNS is working as well. And Uh, I'm going to, to set an IP for the second uh, interface and uh, configuration. And uh, in the latest version of Debian, the configuration of network can be done with system D network D. And the, the configuration file is uh, this one, etc, system D network, and then uh, the name of the interface dot network. I, I will uh, copy this content uh, there. So this is the name of the interface, and then this is the IP, and uh, this is the DNS. So the DNS server is also the the main server of Debian EDU. So this is the IP of the main server, which uh, we have not installed yet. But when after we install it, uh, it will get uh, this IP. So it is getting the DNS from the main server as well. And uh, restart system D, network D. So uh, until now, I've just uh, changed the configuration of this uh, network interface by adding it a, a fixed IP, uh, which is the, this one. But uh, to make it a, a gateway, uh, we need to do some other things uh, as well. First of all, let, let's change the host name. Maybe this is not so so important, but
And uh, to make it a, a gateway to enable forwarding of the network, uh, I'm uh, going to use uh, firewall D. Uh, other ways can be uh, used as well uh, with uh, IT tables, etc. But uh, I found this uh, easy. Now, uh, Firewall D has uh, uh, these two zones. It has some other zones as well, but these two, external and uh, DMZ. Uh, if we add the external interface to, to the zone external, and if we, we add the internal interface to the, uh, to the zone DMZ, then it will automatically uh, function as a, a gateway. So all, all the traffic uh, coming from the internal network network will be forwarded with NAT uh, to the external interface and it will uh, act as a, a gateway. So uh, le let me try to make this configuration. This is just a way, uh, one way to, um, to set up a Debian server as a gateway. Uh, it can be done with other uh, tools as well. So uh, we are done with uh, the gateway. Uh, now we are going to install the, the main server here. And uh, this main server will be connected to switch two because this switch two is connected to gateway uh, one. <coughs> and uh, it is also going to be connected to another uh, switch. Uh, we will create another virtual network with name switch three. Uh, and uh, the main server will, will be connected bo both to switch two and to switch three, three. But it, it will it will not be connected to the default uh, bridge uh, that is connected to the to the network. So I'm going to uh, create switch three because uh, we have created switch two. We need a switch three now. Uh, I'm inside the gateway. I have to exit first. I need to remove these uh, these two configuration options. Uh, and uh, I'm going to install to install the main server from from the ISO. Uh, I, I have this downloaded this ISO. Uh, uh, no Debian EBU. I will copy to user one. Uh, 
So we, we have the either now. Uh, the latest is of Debian edu. And uh, I'm, going, uh, I'm going to define a virtual machine. And uh, the definition is done with LXC init. LXC. Oh. LXC init. And then the name of the virtual machine that will be uh, created, I will call it uh, main server 2 because I already have uh, a couple of other. Uh, I have main server and main server one that I've been uh, using for some other testing. So I'm going to create main server two. LXC init uh, main server two. And this uh, empty option means that it, uh, it does not have, uh, it does not use a default image. So we will uh, add an empty disk later, but uh, Right now, it does not have an, uh, an image. And then this option that tells that it is a virtual machine. No, it is not a container, it is a virtual machine. And then uh, I will connect it. Default network will be switch uh, one uh, or switch two. The default network is going, is going to be switch two. And then uh, I will add some limits as well. Uh, limit memory uh, for gigabyte and uh, limits dot CPU uh, two. So I've created uh, or I've defined this virtual machine, but. Uh, I'm going to connect uh, this machine to uh, the switch three as well. So I'm connecting uh, the network switch three to the machine main server two. Of the virtual machine main server two. So right now it has two uh, network interfaces. One is one that is connected to switch two, and one that is connected to switch uh, three. And uh, now I'm also going to attach a hard disk of size uh, not 100 gigabyte, 60. Maybe it, it is enough. And now I'm going to attach another device, uh, which is a CD-ROM. And uh, I, as a source for the, this CD-ROM will be the uh, Debian EDU ISO image that we will uh, use to, to install the, the system. main server two, and uh, this is just a name, CD-ROM, CD-ROM one, it doesn't matter. Uh, it is the name of the device, and this is the type of the device, which is disk or hard disk. And then uh, this is 
the source of the disk. But if it, it is actually uh, the path is And then uh, book priority one, uh, which makes makes sure that uh, when we start the virtual machine, it will uh, boot from the CD-ROM, from uh, the disk that we are attaching now. And we also have to set uh, another option configuration option security uh, secure boot false config set this option is false And uh, now we have done this part with extra setup because this is how we are connecting and working on the server. And uh, to start to start the server, we use the command LXC start name of the server and then console VGA to get uh, a graphical uh, console from the server. Now, because we have done the configuration of Expra, uh, the graphical applications on the server are displayed on our local machine, and uh, we can work uh, we can work locally. And we do the insta installation of the server. Uh, let me make this full screen as well. So we are now viewing the display of the virtual machine that we are installing. It is trying to find uh, automatic network configuration from DHCP, but actually there is no DHCP because we have uh, we are installing this be behind the gateway that we built, and it does not provide a DHCP. And uh, we will continue the installation without uh, network because everything that needs to be installed is on the CD. Do not uh, configure the network at, at this time and continue. And here uh, we are going to uh, choose the Debian Edu profiles. And uh, for, for each profile, there, there is a short uh, description here. So, mains, we should check it, of course. And the uh, workstation, we should uh, keep it checked as well because uh, it provides the graphical uh, interface, uh, the uh the browser and so on uh and usually they are, they are installed together and uh, we can check or uncheck this ltsp server because we can install ltsp servers separately but uh, we can also uh, install an ltsp server in the main server in the same uh virtual machine as the main server profile so we are going to keep the, this one as well and the uh, roaming 
workstation for single uh, user machines on the Debian EDU network, which sometimes travel outside the network. This is for laptops uh, that the people uh, bring uh, into the school network and then they take them at home. Uh, this is ex exclusive with the other uh, profiles, so we can we can uncheck if we are going to install a laptop uh, like this with uh, this uh, image with this uh, Debian EDU image. We should uncheck these uh, profiles and check only this one. And uh, standalone for machines uh, meant to be used outside the Debian EDU network. It in includes a graphical user interface and conflicts with other profiles. Uh, this is something similar, but uh, for, uh, for a machine that has no relation with the uh, Edu uh, network. And uh, the minimal profile uh, fully integrated into the Debian Edu network, but contains only a basic system without uh, any uh, graphical user interface. This is in some special cases. For example, if uh, we want to, uh, to separate some uh, this main server has uh, several services uh, inside it. If uh, we want to separate uh, one of these services uh, into a separate uh, machine, into a separate server, then we install a minimal, uh, uh, the minimal profile on the new server and then uh, install the service that we want to move and then uninstall it from the main server. Uh, this is, is used in cases like this. And uh, also, maybe in some other cases. And it, it does the partition automatically. Uh, it is going to use LVM and uh, different part partitions for uh, for homes, etc. Participating package uses survey now this time. And the root password. This is similar to uh, the Debian normal Debian installation, and then uh, full name for the new user. Uh, now there is another user account, and this user account actually is very important because it is used as a administrator. For example, it can access uh, LDAP and so on. So uh, this install installation script, uh, when installs Debian Edu, it gives uh, special access uh, permissions to the first user. Uh, I'm calling it just user one. Username, user one. Password of the user one. Pass one. Can it use the largest continuous free space? I'm not sure what is the uh, uh, the right solution uh, here or the right answer, yes or no. Uh, let's make it yes. And it will take some time actually to to install the the system because there are also lots of packages to to be installed. But uh, we are done with the configuration. It is not going to ask any more questions, I think. And uh, I will I will let it uh, install, and uh, uh, we are going to work with the other server that we have already installed. Uh, I've installed previously. 
So we are not going to wait uh, until it is going uh, until uh, it finishes the installation. Maybe we'll come uh, back later to to see uh, whether the installation is, is completely successful or or not. So I, I'm closing this uh, window. Okay, so uh, we we are going uh, we were uh, seeing the console of the main server two and main server two is still running uh, in the background that it is continuing with the installation, but uh, now we are going to work with uh, with this one uh, main server because I've installed it previously and it is already uh, finished, so. Uh, it is running. How do we get a console, a graphical console, to this uh, server? And let's see. Console main server, and then type equal to uh, VGA. And uh, uh, we are. Uh, I'm accessing the con console of of that server. And I will make it full screen so that we can work properly. And I log in as uh, user one, which was the 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 most important user that I, I told. And password pass one. Star session. So uh, when we open the uh, when we begin for the first time, we get automatically this browser opened and uh, this page with information about Debian Edu Scholar Linux and uh, what to be done. And these are some uh, useful uh, links. For example, this one, uh, www.goza, will open uh, the interface uh, of Goza. And so we can access it with this uh, link. And uh, then we use the credentials of user one to to log in to go to Goza, and this is the interface of Goza. And we can do several uh, things here. I'm not sure yet uh, what exactly uh, can be can be can be done. Uh, how to be to, to do it, but uh, at users, uh, we can create new users, or actually we can go to to another uh, kind of uh, directory or users and create new users uh, in this uh, in this uh, uh, directory. Uh, also, we can create uh, groups. Uh, we can manage systems. Now, what are what are the systems? Systems are, for example, if uh, we install a new uh, LTS uh, server, or this is a new system, and it has to uh, interact somehow with uh, the main uh, server, and we have to register it uh, here in the Goza interface. Or if uh, we install a printer, I guess the printers uh, belong to this category as well, uh, system. For example, uh, let, let me go to systems, go to the root, uh, what actions have here, uh, create. So also workstations, yeah, uh, a server, LTSP server, for example, or a workstation, or a network printer, or, ne or network uh, device. So these are, uh, are uh, systems, and we have to register them uh, here so that they can interact correctly with uh, the server, etc. But uh, now I, I would like to uh, show how to start uh, 
a disk list uh, client. We can try to start a disk list uh, client. Yeah. On the full screen. And then I will cl close this window. So main server is still running. We just close the display uh, of it. And uh, So uh, I want to install uh, to start an LTSP clients and uh, LTSP clients don't need to any special configuration on the Goza. You just start one and it will automatically connect to uh, to the main server. It, it works out, out of the box. And I am going to create a virtual machine that uh, functions as a disk list uh, computer. It is not. It does not have a disk. So I already have client one and client two. Uh, let me create another one that is uh, client three. Uh, this option empty means that it does not uh, use an image, so uh, it also does not have a disk. And uh, this option minus minus VM means that it is going to be a virtual machine, not uh, a container. And the the default network will be switch one, so it is going to have a network interface and this network interface is going to be connected to switch one which is the internal uh, lan uh, behind the behind the main server so it, uh, it is going to be connected to to this lan to the internal lan and uh, some limits uh, this one gigabyte is wrong because with one gigabyte it, it is not going to work it, uh, it needs two gigabytes A disk list uh, client with one gigabyte somehow does not work because uh, I've tried it and it, it didn't work. Pro probably the image is a little bit uh, bigger than one gigabyte. I'm not sure. And the uh, security secure boot uh, false. The, this configuration option as well. So this minus C are uh, configuration options. Minus C limit memory, uh, minus C uh, CPU, one CPU, mi minus C security secure uh, boot. So uh, I'm defining a virtual machine uh, like this, uh, without disk, uh, connected to the network switch one, and with these uh, limitations, uh, lim memory two gigabyte, one CPU, and uh, no secure boot. And uh, I'm going to change also the boot pri priority of uh, of interface Ethernet zero. So boot priority equal one means that uh, it will start to boot from the network uh, interface. Uh, first of all, so the first thing that it will going to try is uh, the network interface. And uh, now we uh, let, let's see the config, con configuration. Let let's show let us show the configuration of the of this client of this virtual machine.
the net networks which run is it is connected to this network and boot priority one that we uh, set up above. And now we are going to start this uh, virtual machine with uh, this command. And it, it is starting uh, to boot from the network interface using uh, PXE. Uh, it found uh, the server, the main server, and oops, uh, I, I press something. And uh, one option is this uh, client, which is the default one. Uh, and another option is uh, uh, thin client. And the thin client is something, uh, it, is a, it is a little bit different. And so we have this uh, LTSP uh, number 27. And then now uh, any user uh, that is registered in uh, Goza can access this machine with the uh, username and password that is registered in Goza. For example, user one is such a user uh, that we created uh, at the installation of the, uh, of the main server. But uh, I've created also uh, another user, for example, uh, test one. And uh, we get this uh, XFC desktop. Yeah, it has lots of uh, education applications. And so uh, we get an IP in this network, which is the LTSP. Uh, network behind the main server the network is working as well and our home directory uh, is uh, in this home zero uh, test one and uh, this actually is mounted, I think, uh, with NFS or, or something like this from, from the server. So the home directory actually is on the server. Uh, this list client does not have any, any, any disk of its own. Uh, actually, it has a RAM, and when I start an application, for example, when I uh, start the terminal, I think that uh, the application is running in, in the client, not, not in the server, and also the desktop, etc. Whatever uh, program that is running is actually running uh, on the client, uh, not on the server, on the RAM of the, of the client. Only the disk is on the server. So this is disk list uh, client. Uh, actually, in LTSP terminology, it is also called uh, FET client, FET LTSP client, because it has some RAM and uh, the applications uh, execute on the RAM of the, of the client. Uh, there is also, let, let me shut this down. And the entry is stopped. Uh, there is also a thin client, which is ba based on uh, X2Go. So let, let's start the client, uh, client tree again, and we will select something else from the 
from the boot menu. So, oops, uh, I just wanted to, to see the boot menu. Uh, I... This F is a uh, force. Uh, we stop it. Uh, like uh, plug out the uh, from, from the so we we power it off. Um, let, let's start it again. Uh, so, I don't know why, why I am not able to move the selection. I'm using the arrows, but just pick the default one. There must be something wrong. I wanted to to show the LX, uh, uh, X2Go uh, thin client. Maybe I should, uh, I should try it from my... Uh, Maybe I should uh, I should try it from my uh, own uh, computer because uh, right now we are inside inside uh, the virtual computer lab and from from here we are accessing the the server and uh, the keyboard keys are <coughs> going through a lot of filters I, I don't know what is happening uh, let, let let me try to to start from. So I'm uh, I'm running it now from my laptop because previously we uh, I I was working from the virtual computer computer lab with VCL. Oh, 
Okay, uh, so I can move it now, it works. So the default selection is this one, this CLIS workstation. And uh, there is also this uh, plain x to go thing client. This one as well. I don't know, uh, I'm not sure what is the difference. But uh, also there is, an, uh, there is another option to install uh, Debian EPO. So if uh, this virtual machine that I, I've uh, created also has some disk, then we can start installing, uh, for example, a workstation uh, or, an, or another LTSP server, for example. And we can do it from the network, I guess. All the packages are uh, from the main server. So let, let's try this x 2 go uh, thing client. User, for example, test one. And uh, we are again. It's not very, very clean. I guess it is the extra uh, problem in the network. It is not a problem with the uh, Debian idea. So I will uh, log out. Let me close this one. So uh, once I connected from my laptop, uh, it was disconnected from from this one because uh, the configuration of Xpra is not such such that uh, it, it can allow multiple uh, uh, connections to the same session. So if I connect now, it will disconnect. If I connect now from uh, from this one, it will disconnect from my laptop. Anyway, <laughs> so uh, this is what I've done so far. I've tested uh, this list clients, and uh, I'm not sure what else. Uh, I'm not sure what else can be done uh, here in the administration and uh, what other tests uh, can be done uh, to test further uh, Debian EPO. Uh, 